How's it going? My name is Steve. I'm a full stack AR creator and a comic book illustrator, owner of Illtopia, and today I'll be talking about immersive experiences. So what is an immersive experience and how do you create it? That's really one of the things that I've been playing around with in my head and in my practice over the past year. What is an immersive experience and why does it matter? Those two questions have circulated my mind recently as I've gotten deeper into the AR space. An immersive experience is an illusory environment that completely surrounds you such that you feel that you're inside of it and a part of it. The term is associated with technology environments that command the senses such as virtual reality and mixed reality. Those senses are sight, sound, and touch. We don't necessarily have the technology to incorporate smell and taste yet, and frankly, I don't think we really want to. I can imagine a bunch of fart smells and crappy testing use cases. But again, I think there's some really, really great smell AR enthusiasts that, that really are able to push the conversation forward with that if they could get the price down. And so what makes something immersive? I ponder on that idea pretty often with my work because it is a powerful thing to implement. I think back to my experience growing up learning new things. It is one thing to read about it in books, but it's another thing to interact with it. I think about all the memories of playing video games and board games. You know, Monopoly, Mario, those things gave me such robust learning experiences that stayed with me because it taught me to venture out into the world and use my skills to make money and avoid risk. When I look at my experiences in traditional education, I always thought about computer games by Blizzard that we would play in the computer lab at school. The games are focused around answering questions correctly under time constraints. All the experiences that resonate with me were immersive. When we look at books, they are passive learning environments. I didn't realize that until I was introduced to YouTube and Khan Academy when I was studying for the MCAT. Engaging with my eyes and ears really changed the game. I was able to look at the MCAT content, look at all the science and everything involved with medicine, and really contextualize it. I felt that I was spending less time learning and was retaining more. Compared to text, video makes things more immersive because it incorporates more senses. Much like books only incorporate eyes, and audio books and podcasts only incorporate ears, video does both. To me, immersive experiences are often confused with interactive experiences. I would argue that they're not, but they can be as you involve more senses. Listening to audiobooks, watching videos, reading books, they're all passive experiences. They are immersive, but still passive nevertheless. When experiences involve touch, then we become more interactive. Interactivity is tied to the concept of actions. A person must do something in the experience for it to be interactive. When you add other senses, such as sight and sound, then you're completely immersed in the experience. That often becomes the power of building XR experiences on game engines, such as Unity and Unreal, which I would argue there's more on Unity than Unreal, but they're still available on both. The tools with the capacity for game development opens possibilities for people to add interactivity to their experiences to make them more immersive. This is often what I refer to as gamification. And it's my definition of gamification and not the stereotypical definition or the common definition of gamification. There are different ways we experience gamification and that is dependent on the device platform. Augmented reality uses interactions on a screen such as toggles, sliders, and buttons. You can think of this as playing a phone game. Virtual reality uses interactions in a completely virtual way. 
Because you have a headset on, you are inside the game as if you were really the character. You don't control the character, you actually are the character. Mixed reality is a combination of the two. You see the real world, but you're able to interact with the digital content because the device uses hand tracking and is able to contextualize all the digital stuff in a tangible way. And by tangible, I mean you're able to interact with it even though there's no haptic feedback. I'm seeing with health education training and health education material, the power of more immersive experiences that involve all the senses come with a memory of the feeling you have in that experience. I recall the reasons why I remember different songs more than anything on a test. It's not necessarily because they're relatable stories, but because the story is experienced in a particular way. I can remember the same story in a movie rather than a book because more senses are incorporated. On top of that, I remember more games that I've played than movies because there was a physical element and action associated with those experiences rather than something passive. I think that this is an evolution of learning and why immersive experiences will pick up more, especially post-COVID. Because COVID's going to last for at least another couple of years. This is not going to go away overnight. Technology is at a point where we can see 3D models on paper through augmented reality. No longer do we have to imagine what a 3D render is of a 2D image. We can rotate it, scale it, and move them around. We can add sound and animation to contextualize the 3D model in an environment that makes sense. And we're also getting occlusion. We can have more control over our creativity to learn more in a small amount of time. And that's really going to diminish the amount of time that we're going to be spending studying because we're just going to be able to retain more. Up to a certain extent, I think once we get past a certain amount of generations, then that will be a new baseline and things tend to regress from there. But nevertheless, like this is the power of immersive experiences and how you can create them within the work that you do. A simple skill, move and rotate feature with some audio and animation really goes a long way. And we use all that stuff already especially me I use a lot of that stuff in my work already and with all the courses that I'm creating and online tutorials and YouTube videos uh, this really really just takes this to the next level just building on this foundation and these building blocks and so it's a matter of how we use XR to package all of them into one immersive experience and if we could find a way to package all those things to incorporate all the senses possible, then that's a recipe for success right there. And so with that, definitely check out all my projects. And so if you like this, support your boy. If not, you know, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. If you're interested in learning more about augmented reality, you can check out my free course. It's on Gumroad, focuses on art, tech, and activism and augmented reality and it really is an intro course that teaches you how to make an AR app without code. Check out all my courses on Skillshare, check out Doodle Live, check out the AR books that I make with Island Fever and Illtopia Studios. Support me on Patreon if you feel inclined to. If anything else just follow me on social media on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram.